Hey YouTube! Today I'm back with a book review video and it is My Sister's Keeper by Jodi Picoult. I finished this last night and I thought it was such a great book that I just wanted to let you guys know my thoughts on it, why I like it so much, and why I recommend it to you. So I didn't have really high expectations for it because I really am huge on reading uh, fantasy novels. So this is a little bit too realistic. This the genre of this book is realistic fiction. So this is about a girl named Anna. She's 13 years old and she is brought into this world to save her sister's life. Kate developed leukemia when she was a toddler and so Anna's parents, Brian and Sarah, conceived Anna just so she they could use her stem cells, her bone marrow. Basically they were using her body to prolong the life of Kate's. And after um, donating blood, platelets, all these transfusions, bone marrows, lymphocytes. Now they want Anna to donate a kidney to Kate because Kate had a kidney infection which led to kidney failure. Kate's parents didn't want some random person to be her donor. They wanted it to come from a family member because it's a lot safer that way. Um, it's less likely for her body to reject the implant. And also when you sign up for a transplant, you're placed on a list at first come first serve. So who knows how many people are before her. So that's, that's Anna's purpose. There are several narrators for this story. We've got Anna, Sarah, her mother, Brian, her father, Campbell, which is her lawyer, and we have Jesse, which is Anna's brother, and there's Julia, the guardian ad litem. So here's the thing. Anna is 13 years old, and she's never been able to live a life of her own. The events in Anna's life is solely dependent on Kate's health. So if Kate had to be in the hospital, Anna had to be in the hospital, right by her side, donating her body parts. I really didn't like her mother, Sarah. She clearly prioritized Kate before Jesse and Anna. I mean, she has two other children, but she really just kind of pushed them off to the back burner and only worried about Kate, which is understandable if you're a mother and you have a dying child. You're going to do everything in your power to save them. It's not really a choice. It's your job as a parent to make sure your child is as safe and healthy as can be. So. But she was really frustrating to read about. So at this point, Jesse is 18 years old. I think he's 18. Um, and he's a delinquent. He burns buildings down. He steals vehicles. He does drugs. He drinks. All these things that he, an 18-year-old shouldn't be doing. But his parents have given up on him. They have spent so much of their time worrying about Kate and taking care of her that them just ignored him all throughout his childhood. So obviously when a child feels neglected, they start to just put up a barrier between them and their parents. And he just did whatever he wanted to do and his parents really didn't care and nor did they have the time to worry about him, honestly. I mean, he has his health, he's okay. And with Anna, Sarah was completely unfair to Anna. She never considered her feelings. I guess the turning point for Anna when she finally felt like she's had it, that this life wasn't fair and it's not for her, was when she was recruited to go to hockey camp and that was out of state and they provided a grant for her so airfare would be paid for, room and boarding, and she would be trained by the best people and she really wanted to go because she was playing um, she was playing as goalie and she was doing a really good job, she was better than the boys, so this meant a lot to her and naturally her mother said no. What if Kate was in the hospital? What if she needed you around and you weren't here? So Anna had to let go of all the things she wanted to do. She made all kinds of sacrifices. She basically sacrificed her whole life because she couldn't live her own life. So Anna hires Campbell Alexander her, as her lawyer to be medically emancipated so she can make her own decisions so her parents can no longer force her to be Kate's donor. Her greatest obstacle is to win this case against her mother. Her father sympathizes and he agrees that she shouldn't give up her life and it's not fair because it's one surgery after another and initially they conceived Anna so that she could donate um, so they could use her umbilical cord when she was a baby and they weren't going to use her body again but it's been 13 years of using her since she was 
literally the moment she was born. The defendant is her mother. Her mother was a lawyer at some point, so she understands how the law works and everything, and she served as her own lawyer. I don't want to talk about the lawsuit because that's a huge chunk of the book and I don't want to give too much away, but basically imagine if you were a child, a preteen, living under the same roof as your mother, and she's trying to persuade you to see things her way and get you to drop the lawsuit and that's a lot of pressure for a little girl. It's a, a lot of pressure for anyone to live in the same house that you're having a feud with. I love how the narration is always changing. You're seeing things from different perspectives and and it's very realistic in a way that um, everyone's points of view is so different that you see that just because you're family and you live in the same house doesn't mean that you see eye to eye with um, anything. And that's how Anna felt. One thing that I found unique about this book is that the style is written very differently. Like, I haven't seen it in any other book before. Where they get to one point where something really exciting happens, then the, in the next paragraph, without even changing chapters, just in the next paragraph, they'll be recalling a memory from 10 years ago or even last month. But they go from one setting to another just between paragraphs. So it's, it's a little bit confusing at first. I, I was thinking, like, am I missing a, a chapter here? Or did I just skip a page? But um, no, they definitely jump around a lot. It kind of... Um, so I, I'm curious to see how they portray that in the movie, or do they just keep a straight timeline if they jump back and forth? And the, I find that that's really interesting, because it's so realistic, but I've never seen an author capture that kind of style, because in real life, when we're talking to someone, we're having a conversation, and then but whether we talk about it or not, in the back of our minds, we're thinking about something else. Like, you, you're talking, and then it, it sort of, whatever you're talking about sort of jogs your memory, back to another memory, so your brain is just constantly bouncing back and forth. Um, or if you're going, or if you walk into a room and you absorb your surroundings and that reminds you of another time and place, and so you think about that. And they capture, so, and Jodie Picoult captures all of that. This book really caught me by surprise. I did not expect it to be so exciting. Books that I read usually involve like witches and dragons and mythical creatures, so I didn't think I'd like it so much, but from the moment I opened up the book, seriously, just from page one, I was just captivated. There's a lot of philosophy in this book. I mean, it really makes you think. If you've ever considered reading this book and you weren't quite sure whether to read it or not, whether you'd like it or not, I would definitely say give it a shot. You'll you'll be impressed. I would say the appropriate audience for this book would be adults because it is very deep and there are some serious issues and um, I think a lot of mothers, parents can relate to this and it's a lot and it's a lot more meaningful. I think um, teen readers, young adults would enjoy it as well but it might not have that same impact on you. Like I mentioned before, the way that the book is written is a little bit complicated, how you're jumping from one scenario to another within the same page. And so it is a little bit difficult to read um, if, you don't, if you're not really a focused reader. And also, like I said, adults can relate to this more than um, young adults or preteens. Not to say that adults are the only ones who have straddled that fine line between life and death, but I think it's just more appropriate for an older audience. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this review and found it helpful. If you've read the book, let me know what you think, and I'll be back soon with another review. Bye!